Oh, also, it's also okay. Thank you. All right now, the recorder has started. Uh, again, welcome. Um. All right. So uh, this session or this tutorial is going to be kind of a recap of what you had uh, of something that you have gone through yesterday. Um, so again, this um, tutorial is going to be about. Um, sorry, I'm waiting for yeah. For the, okay. Um, moment um okay i suppose that you can see my screen now right and um and uh, let me check also do you hear me well uh, great. Uh, thank you. Um, so yes, so you have you had yesterday a tutorial about that included some discussion about data science uh, components of data science workflow, and uh, you discussed the. Um, um, uh, uh, the crisp for example the crisp uh, uh workflow or the crisp uh, um standard basically so just to make this um kind of interactive and since you have already went through this uh, can someone uh summarize for me what crisp is or what is like the main uh, stages of of um a data science workflow there are like five stages and um anyone yes abu Bak. go ahead uh okay so crisp means uh it is a kind of a standard for uh, processing in data mining. It's, it's an abbreviation for cross industry standard uh, process for mining. So it have, uh, uh, it, it, I think it have like six phases, five, six phases. So yeah. we need to understand about the business requirements. Uh, we need to understand about the data. Uh, it's uh preparation then i think modeling i think we need to model the data i think then deployment so the six are the things in crisp yes okay that uh great thank you uh this is exactly yes i will work this correct exactly correct so yeah um crisp is uh is um uh, standard that was introduced in the 90s uh basically it's across uh, industry and um so it's like any uh, uh it's it, like it, it's relevant for several fields that relate to data mining and data analytics uh for us uh, it's um like uh, it's uh, like includes our parts of it are relevant for like data engineering parts are uh, basically, like all these roles, data science and uh, machine learning engineer are all, all these roles are included in these um, uh, six phases. Uh, so, yes, so exactly as Abu Bakr said, these are like you have these six phases uh, business understanding, data understanding, data preparation, modeling, evaluation, and deployment. Um, uh, so, and it's uh, uh these bases um are like are it's not a strict you don't have to you, you can you go from one two three four five six but it's not a strict order and it's not like one direction 
you can go back and forth between several st stages and you can re reiterate so um uh, so okay you start beginning with a business understanding so you have to understand what is the problem you're facing or what is the problem you're trying to solve um okay given the task on hand the for you i'm asking you now for this challenge that you have for this week zero can one of you define for me what is the business understanding what was the business objective of this of this um, of this challenge of course let me before anyone answers one objective for you is you're trying to pass this assessment right so okay yes yes that is the main goal yes but besides that there is a business objective you are trying to reach with uh, with the analysis you're we are trying where you're doing right so can one of you like uh, give me an answer what is the business objective in this case or what is the problem we're trying to solve anyone um we have a our worker game go ahead uh, so it's more like a question uh, is it on the news data set that we are given yes exactly yeah on the news data set okay so i think uh, shall i answer it I'll try it once sorry. yeah yes. yeah you, you got, try yes okay so uh, mainly the business objective for task one, I guess, would be to uh, get the top and bottom tens of the highest and the lowest ones that are performing in terms of country, traffic, and uh, I think on sentiment values. So I think I can say on task one only, but uh, I don't know about yeah, that okay. for other all right uh okay so i would say it's a good try um maybe it's uh, like uh, because you're given tasks it's uh it uh, might be a bit confusing but let's say uh just to clarify from here it's like because you're doing all of this you're going to do um okay uh the tasks you're given are actually like exploring the whole Faces or the whole, all of those of all of these stages. So what you mentioned is part of the data exploratory analysis. This is part of the ADA. Um, it can be like it could be. One can say like it's a it's an objective, but it's uh, maybe there is a, a more a comprehensive or like a a, a bigger goal. Uh, do you want to try again? Work. Okay, uh, so I think the overall goal would be for the data set to actually analyze the sentiment. It could be for sentiment analysis, uh, like un to understand the public opinion on the news and everything. Uh, like from my understanding and going through the internet, so it could be for text summarization uh, in like identifying trends probably so from okay. two of them all right yeah okay you, you have given a, a couple of, of of answers and i think yeah you are like on the ballpark uh so uh you're not yeah yeah you are at least partially correct uh good someone else want to try um i i think i saw someone else raise their hand um okay let me see uh we have hillary you can yeah go ahead okay thank you um i think the business uh, the goal of this is to is to analyze the news and the the various global yeah. agencies how they how they relate to each other and get the importance of the 
for the news so that we can be able to probably improve on uh, maybe how we can, how the media can can improve their uh, their presentation of their news maybe what is wrong with their uh, maybe what is the positive things that they can improve on and the negative that they can maybe so that their their business can be can be better okay uh this is is a, is a good plausible answer as well uh thank you um uh, next uh call me uh go ahead and please tell me how to pronounce your name yeah it's call me okay call me um okay go ahead okay what i understand from this challenge is just that uh we want to the business problem is to identify a relationship between different news and uh, how people react to these news. Okay. okay. Um, all right. Uh, thank you. This is also another plausible answer. The thing is that uh, after I asked, asked the question, I realized that maybe in this challenge in particular, you haven't been like it's not clearly defined uh, in the document and i'm just going to try to like open the document itself the challenge document um so uh in the meantime uh bificado okay thank you thank you work uh bificado go ahead and also please thank tell you. me yeah uh, how do That's you pronounce your name Befecado. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yes. I think the main or the, the broader uh, business aim is to evaluate as the candidates for the program. And yeah. I think the challenge is uh, one of the way or the tool to achieve the business goal. Yeah. Well, okay. It's, uh, yeah, that's true. That's true that uh, the main goal of this challenge is to assess you um but there as uh, maybe that was emphasized by Yababal yesterday also when he discussed this the challenge is that there is also this challenge is not just uh, an exam it's actually uh, a, a real um uh, business uh inspired or actually business um it's actually uh, a real question there is a real questions embedded in this challenge there is a real value that can be uh, um, produced uh, by finishing when you finish this challenge uh, there is a real value that is produced because there is a uh, like really interesting questions that can be answered just going forward because here in this document yes usually or in the upcoming uh, weeks the upcoming hopefully once you get into the um, next weeks of the training always the, the business objective will be really the the like very it's very important to define as like uh as we, just, as we discuss here this is the first it's the first step it's the most one of the let's say it's the most critical step this most critical space and it's not an easy thing to define which what is exactly the problem that we need to answer so yes so i think uh some of you have given the answer like uh, as was defined um by our also this already defined by 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 the ten academy team is that we want to see the trends and the correlations in the in the in the um, media news when the media news reports on events uh and um so this, uh, this is like the uh, the final overall goal that you want to reach by the end of like uh, when you successfully finish this cycle or well, successfully let's say anyway um well i think uh, uh so don't like uh, in the future this will be very important to define in the next upcoming challenges for now let's for this week because it's not the focus there is this focus on also on assessing you so uh you are like forgiven for not uh for not uh answering this from the start okay um okay there's a question
yeah so exactly um right um uh okay so this is the first step the second step is to uh data understanding okay uh but let me just put this in slideshow and go forward uh, so this is the first step was the business understanding like we define the project objective from the like and require from the business perspective what is our business goal uh, sometimes this will be like uh, we are trying to see for example like um, what um, um, like what if for example if we have like a let's say a website and we have we want to see like we want to have like what is the best design that attract uh, like uh, more um, uh, visitors basically or gets us more interactions and so this is our goal uh, when we define the business understand the business objective or the business understanding we also are kind of um uh, defining also how we will measure the success or the solution of, to our problem uh, which what is the measure exactly so is it the number of visitors for example is it going to be like uh, defining like how um uh, finding like a particular features uh that uh, that correlate the most to with, with what we are searching for like for example like what what makes um a, a news media's website more visited um uh, okay and then we also define our plan in a sense the tech stack we're going to use and um uh okay this this is like what we get from this first take um i think i heard someone asking or maybe someone contributing sorry ah sorry i'm so sorry so sorry i think i stopped sharing or is it you don't see my my screen sorry I'm very sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, now you see it, I suppose. Sorry about that. So yeah, I was just on this one slide, so I haven't done that much. Uh, the next step will be the data understanding. And in the data understanding here, we will I, will be identifying the data sources if we don't have the data already like uh, we will collect uh, the data so this uh, like this step is usually like really the core or like part the critical part of a data engineer a data engineering a data engineer job um here will be like describe like understand once we have the data we have to understand it describe it explore it discover patterns within the data. This is without any kind of modeling. So we are just looking at the data and trying to look at different aspects of the data. So like uh, maybe like this is like the ADA calls here. Um, uh, we are assessing like it's looking if there are missing data, how much missing data are there, like if there is like uh, maybe uh, inaccurate data if the data is corrupted what is the format of the data like like we are just trying to describe the data there from this this step also we are gaining insights already um, uh, so i think uh, like uh, much of the of the task one is uh, is basically this for you task one for you um in the data in the challenge is basically that understanding um uh okay um okay so as you can see here in the diagram there is like back and forth between business understanding and that understanding because like uh when we define when we look at the data when the sources of the data are available we might go back and redefine our problem or like we add to it like we, let's search for other data maybe and um yeah so it's not like a, a one direction so it's not like you just uh, 
defines your problem and that's done. You can go back and like uh, see that there are like more things to consider or more things to, to solve for there are more issues. Uh, okay, next is data preparation. And this is a step of like you're preparing for modeling. So this, uh, these are preparing the data for the next steps. Uh, this will include um, data cleaning, um, uh, maybe handling missing data or outliers. Uh, you might have been having like, you're having like data from multiple sources and you want to join all the data together, integrate them together in a way that um, are consistent. Um, and will be like, uh, depending on the kind of modeling that you planning to do, you will prepare a data in a format that is suitable for that. That will include also like choosing features. So not all of your, some models will not be using all the data. You have to only choose part of the features you have in your data. Um, well, and, uh, there are maybe also transformations that you need to do changing of the variables, maybe you'll, you will split a variable into multiple ones, and maybe you'll join multiple variables into one. These are all operations you can do on your data, standardization, um, uh, normalization. These are all things that you, you will do in the data in preparing it for modeling. Modeling is a step of... Uh, <coughs> sorry. Modeling would be that, uh, like applying in your case, maybe machine learning models, or it could be like even statistical models or stuff, depending on like the kind of analysis you're doing. Um, uh, because this is a general thing, but um, cases that you will, will be applying machine learning models, um, maybe yes, measuring like uh, doing topic analysis, um, uh, or like keyword extraction, um, clustering, depending on what, what we want, what is the question we are trying to solve for. So here there is a small note about the difference between data analysis and data, data understanding and data preparation. So yeah, the data understanding is a step of exploring the data, evaluating the, its quality, while data preparation is the process of transforming the data and, um, uh, cleaning it and preparing it for for further um, analysis. Um, uh, okay, so these are things that you can do with with uh, with the data, um, like when you are like uh, doing basically these two steps, looking at correlations, the, uh, determining like the linear relationships. These are things like uh, you're plotting your data looking for patterns, uh, like um, extracting like summary statistics from the data, uh, doing dimensionality reduction and feature engineering. Also, this is from the data preparation part. Um, okay, uh, these are all just examples, the thing that can be done. Um, the first stage, and again, we emphasize that this is iterative, um and like uh, you can go back and forth but the modeling part as i said uh, it's like um you'll be choosing models depending on what you, you, your your task is or what your goal is you'll be choosing models um trying maybe models because you're not you don't know a priori which ones will work um uh, and for each model, maybe you will need a different data preparation. So you might be going back and forth between these two steps. Um, uh, when you choose a model, you have to define a metric to evaluate it, um, like to assess the model performance. Um, like there are all these things that you have to take into consideration. Like um, uh, if you have the data, you have to split it into like um, training data, testing, evaluating data, these are like uh, um, this consideration that goes into like the modeling part. So, uh, 
Um, and next, next will be evaluating the model or the model. Uh, well, depending, of course, you can have multiple models and uh, the evaluation uh, metric or what, how you evaluate the model depends on the business goal. Um, and uh, of course, if you like, for example, if you, uh, whatever you choose to, to so once you have a model that's uh, like a plausible, I'll give you a plausible solution, you will measure how it works, um, does it solve your problem, how much of the problem does it solve, how effective it was, um, can you reiterate and improve the model, or does the model like fails and you have to do something else. Um, uh, so these are like you can either reiterate, or if it's satisfactory to some, to some degree, you can move on to the last step, let's say, and that's the deployment. Um, so, uh, okay, so this is just like you when you're putting the model into the like production, and this will include like, uh, you're not done, but it's not, uh, I have the model, I have my answer, it's done. No, you have to like, uh, once you deploy the model, you have to uh, have a plan for like maintaining it and like monitoring its performance. Um, uh, so, and these are all like, these are all like automated. You have to like, uh, um, uh, the, the deployment, the, the update or the like maintenance of the, of the, of the, of the model. These are like, um, uh, should be like uh, maybe uh, automated in a way that are triggered by any change of the data or like um, from feedback or uh, periodically. Um, and of course, monitoring it. Uh, okay. So yeah, basically this is a crisp uh, cycle uh, uh, as defined. Um, Okay, so any questions so far? I think, yeah, you have went through this already. Uh, or any comments? So when it comes to um, Okay, so uh, let's just stop for a, for a minute and see if like anyone has any questions. Uh, all right, I suppose everything is clear. Sounds uh, no one. Um, okay. Yes. Hey, Larry. Am I saying your name correctly? Yeah, yeah. All right. Hey. Go ahead. Yeah, yes, it's clear. Um, I have a question. You mentioned that the for the six phases, it's not necessarily to uh, to be a sequential or something. No, that's it. So does that mean uh, that you can you can just go on it probably let's say. Um, to modeling and evaluation and come back later to uh, the pre-processing. Pre I assume that you have to understand the business model, but let's say something like pre-processing and uh, preparation. Can you do that later or will it affect the, the modeling of the... Uh, yeah, so yeah, maybe I was, uh, my words were, were in kind of imprecise. Um, what I meant is that like, uh, like you can go, once you go through, you can go back and forth basically. It's not that you can just start with uh, data without preparing them like, and just uh, jump uh, into modeling. Um, if you have new data, you haven't explored it and you already haven't like prepared it, you haven't cleaned it, you haven't like put it in the right format, you cannot jump right directly into modeling. But once like uh, you have the data, say you prepared it, 
for one model um in the modeling it's uh, like in model step itself you might like uh, decide to de to try different model or you see like uh there is an issue in 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 like an, in the formatting or in the like it's a features that you need to uh reduce uh the, the features you can go back so it's not like a one direction thing you can go back to the steps to 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 do this uh reiterate on the data preparation um you might at, at some point go back and def redefine the post the business objective or the problem and then uh, uh in that case you might like be jumping around basically so it's not uh, it, it's it's mostly goes uh like in this order but it's not like um one like uh only forward moving uh you can go back and forth between steps but you cannot start with uh unclean data and jump into modeling right away so you have to do that you have to do the data preparation first does this answer a question yes thank you okay um any more questions we have only um let's give a uh, people one second we also stop sharing for a moment um Um, okay. Uh, just a small part. Uh, addition to this is just like all all of this is um, kind of. We're considering just uh, concepts and basically this time. Uh, so, like you have to have this kind of understanding uh, at the back of your mind when going forward, basically. Um, so the next thing we can we talk about is uh, MLOps, which is not separate from um, like the, the data science workflow we're discussing. Basically, you can see like MLOps are like concerned with these two, with these three in particular, but also like uh, maybe also the data preparation part. So uh, MLOps are like, you might already like know this or there was discussion about this already, but it's uh, as it's like uh, similar to DevOps um, and it's like basically borrows heavily from DevOps, which are like the practice and principles are aiming at uh, streamlining the development, monitoring and management of machine learning models. So while DevOps are about software, um, um um so it's more about like a deployment monitoring of basically uh code uh here mlops is like so is this is part basically part of this but also like specialized for for machine learning models uh, in the production environment uh so while in devops you are usually keeping track of code and deploying just code in MLOps, as it's part of this, uh, you can see there are models, right? That you are here, you are working on machine learning models, uh, evaluating those models and deploying them. So if these models have a specifications, you are doing like uh, training them. So you are like, um, you have different, you, you, you might have different iterations of the same like model giving different specifications. When you train a model, you get a different specification. Um, and each run, you, want, you don't want to lose track of what you have done or what you have evaluated before. So in addition to the code, you also want to keep track of the models. And uh, because there are also data and data preparation, you also want to keep track of data, basically. So this all, all of this, is, besides the code, there is data and 
uh, models that you want to keep track of. So these uh, envelopes are uh, these like tools. Basically, it's like uh, practice principles and tools, tools and uh, processes uh, that are required basically for um, putting like okay for like putting machine learning models in production environment uh, like uh, and maintaining that automatically to like um, automating it and scaling it basically uh, so these are the main principles of envelopes so we have variable control you know that already like from code with like yeah, so you have like this uh, for example in, in get what you are doing is basically uh, this is a version control uh, for code so so in version control you have like tracking changes in ml assets but these are including code but also sorry uh, they uh, code also data and model specifications and um, so, and this allows you keeping track of uh, like version control allows you to be able to reproduce the results and roll back to previous versions if necessary. You have automation. Uh, so um, uh, yeah, so basically like uh, everything has to be able you like using just triggers you can move from like data ingestion to model training to validation and deployment in like uh, to automate this uh, pipeline basically and uh, this can be like uh, yeah periodically or like particular triggers um then uh, the next principle is continuous integration continuous delivery yeah continuous training continuous monitoring monitoring Another thing is uh, governance, uh, which is like, um, yeah, so fostering like uh, collaboration, uh, having clear documentation mechanism for like collecting feedback that the protection is all are parts of like the principles of four MLOPs. And um, so Okay, so all of this, like you will have different tools. Uh, if you haven't like learned about this, you will learn about this. Like, uh, of course you have like tools for like, uh, for, for example, for the control for code, you have it. There are uh, similar tools for data versioning, for data versioning and model versioning. So you will have like, for example, MLflow as a tool for model, model, um, a version control uh, dvc is like a, a tool for um, data version control because gen generative ai or uh, is also like basically part of uh, machine learning so the same mlops apply there but uh, the tools sometimes there are different tools for example for model version uh, control there are of course there are ml flow there are other stuff um usually there are like uh, that version control for models there are um there are different specialized tools but anyway this um the principles are the same and um so these are things that you'll need to to pick up and understand um okay so these are just like benefits of envelopes <laughs> um it's uh it's faster uh efficient more efficient and like um way to like go from like uh, development to production uh basically um yeah so any questions about about this part anything that is not clear or Anyone who wants to make a comment about something?
Um, okay, uh, I assume. Uh, okay. or something else if it's not about this uh, particular presentation. But otherwise, I think we can um, like can have can stop this and uh, this session here. Um, so just give you a final chance to ask questions. Otherwise, you can ask on Slack, of course, and um, can uh, I mean asking either on the uh, public channels or reach to to. To me or another okay yes the slides are shared um i think did, did you have an access to uh, uh a g drive folder is the content i'm asking um yes yes okay so you will find these slides there um, uh, what is the name yeah, so it's uh, called data science for oh, yeah. workflow and ML envelopes. Yeah, so because these are just um, concepts that you, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so it's um, for for now, you just need to have like a general understanding. So I'm answering this question on the chat, bo uh, chat box um so presenting um you will have to have a general understanding about about these concepts or like these principles and um this, because this is something that we'll be using basically uh, practically uh, so just for now we have we need to have uh, like a general understanding about it i think at least in some of the tasks we are uh, required to ask uh, to sorry to write or summarize um your understanding about them um which is uh, so it's going to serve you in 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 the future it's not just it's not specifically to this challenge um uh well okay so someone is asking about suggesting a, a source for the deeper envelopes um okay it, this is really uh i don't have a particular suggestion just because it's not something that um um uh, like uh any any like uh, look around something that you will understand it will just be enough uh because like um, the principles and understand is understanding this is not about going deeper in kind of some kind of a theory but it's um it's more about uh like uh, and like keeping this picture in mind and uh, like uh, learning along the way the tools you are going to use and the, like techniques you are going to to employ to uh, to be in 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 keeping of with this like standards or this like uh, kind of uh, workflows um uh komi have an answer i have a question sorry uh, yes yeah, sorry uh, yeah i want to ask a question about uh, the data understanding part, but it's the. I don't, my question is on the challenge that we are telling with. I don't know if I can ask the question here. Yeah, you can. Um, okay, uh, I would like to make sure. I don't know, but we are working on three data sets, right? Yeah, well, I don't know. that's well, from. The document i think that's what i i think so uh i'm a little bit confused about the relationship between these three data sets sorry maybe i missed what you said uh which which data sets uh, i'm talking about the challenge i think in the document they describe um three data sets right uh yeah there are three three data sets yes okay and i think that the task one is based on three of the all the three data sets yeah 
Okay, so my question is, uh, it's not really a question, like, I'm just confused about uh, the relationship between the three data sets. Okay, so yes, you have to do that as um, And they are, uh, okay, so the first one, um, okay, let me just share my screen just to see, like follow the document. Um, okay, so, okay. Uh, all right, so yeah, so we have uh, the first data, uh, the global news data, which includes like um, uh, basically it's uh, articles. So you'll have uh, articles and some uh, um, date uh, information about the article. So articles and the source, source names, and like um, the title, title sentiment. The description okay so this about the like articles the next one is about um more uh, more about like the website or the source the sources so you'll have the source name again the location where the uh, the news media is low is um um headquarters or like where where it originates or or something like that so the, the country uh, so and then um so this basically it's just the the source or the news media website and its location so the country twice so country short name code or country name the third one is the traffic traffic data so it gives you uh, basically like uh, the traffic on this uh, uh, information about the traffic on these media websites, right? Um, uh, okay, so yeah, so you go between, uh, maybe I'm personally not, um, um, Like I don't, I I don't understand. <laughs> the personally, I cannot really explain to you like all of this um, uh, no, feels in 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 details. Uh, but like uh, they, I suppose they are explained, um, or somewhere. But anyway, the data here it's more about like the uh, the news media like the traffic on those on those uh, uh, news media websites basically um, and so you will need to because you're exploring or the in the questions you're exploring this different aspects of these news media websites you will need uh, depending on the question you will need like to use either like one of these data sets or like to join uh, together so there are questions where you're asked about like okay which uh, let me just go to the task to so just like see the question sorry if this is like uh i'm 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 apologizing to everyone else <laughs> sorry if i'm um i hope that i'm not saying something confusing but okay so for example there are questions like simple questions about like a uh, website that have large discount of news articles so this you just use the first data set because it have articles and websites and then you can just uh, like group by website and count the number of articles. You can answer this question. Um, but it, when it comes to, um, so all of these questions, I think you can answer just from the first one, the first uh, data set, uh, then, uh, um yeah i'm just looking for a question that need you need you to join um as the two two data sets and maybe it's actually like explained in the, the in the question that you need to do that maybe the second one um which one okay 
no not this one uh these are still like uh the highest number yeah 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 exactly so for example this one uh countries with the highest number of news media organizations so for this one you need to know that country of the news media organization and for this one you need to use um, the second data set right um yeah because the first one doesn't tell you like where where the where the news media originates which country of origin is you find that in the second one and um just one second uh second yeah, so there's another question about maybe about the traffic. Okay, yes. Uh, yeah, so exactly. So you have this, for example. So you have to like a uh, group for um, take the distribution of sentiments for a particular domain, select the, term, the top 10 domains by with traffic and uh amount of news reported versus the global news sentiment distribution so um yeah so for this uh, you need to pick the domains with the, the with the top with the traffic and then see the distribution of sentiments in their articles uh, like how many articles are positive how many are negative how many are neutral um this is basically the distribution you're looking for and um Then, and then you have to compare this to the global news sentiment distribution. That means uh, you like if you put all of your data set together, like and just look at the distribution without grouping for a particular domain. Just take that as a base and compare what whatever like uh, um, news media domain to the to the base to the, to the base distribution. So maybe in general, you have equal number of positive and negative articles, but for some domains, say you have more negative and for others you have more positive. And uh, when you are asked to look at the top domain, you want to see if there is a relationship between B having more traffic and the distribution. Okay, so for, for example, maybe, I'm just uh, saying here things, I, I didn't, uh, I'm not looking at the distribution myself, but just, maybe i'm guessing that uh, maybe it's that the top uh, domains that's the ones that have more visitors have more negative than average uh, articles for example because we know like uh, negative news sometimes uh, like bring more um traffic for for you for a for a website okay you can this is like a hypothesis or like a, an assumption and you can look at the data and see if it's supported by the data Okay, uh, sorry, someone was asking a question. And before before I do that, uh, Komi, do, do, did I answer your question or did I make it clearer in a sense? Uh, I think uh, I get it now. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, so there was another question, sorry. Or maybe it's was a comment. Yes, a comment. Was there another question? Uh, okay, so because we are uh, out of time, um, let's uh, end the session here. And if there is more questions, please ask Konslak. Um, yeah, and thank you everyone for attending.